Hello people. Today we're going to talk about the Zomex and Motormax F-14 Tomcat from the Super Dynaflights line or from Motormax it's considered the four and a half inch line. So this first casting as compared to the regular Dynaflights the wings were always designed inside to rotate inside the body of the aircraft which looks really good I, I'll tell you they did a really good job with this casting the only thing I really don't like about it of course is the landing gear the wheels um, but you know nothing's perfect and um, for this style or this size of casting uh, to have such accurately um, positioned the wings to sweep like this and look so real, so accurate, is uh, it's really hard. And uh, there's very, very few die cast models on the market of this size um, that, that give this versatility to the toy. So this first casting that I'm going to show you doesn't have any markings anywhere except for on this wing it's got mold marking A217 F14 Tomcat and it looks like there on the very end of the wing we've got a, a casting imperfection. But this is one of the first, if not the first, version of the Super Dynaflights from Zomex. And although the Zomex name isn't anywhere on the bottom, we know this because this rear image on the rear wing, the Top Hatter's image, is a sticker. And we can see that right there. That's obvious because it's almost peeling away. So that's how we know that. We know that this is an early Zymex because it's got a sticker on the rear wing. So, so when we go to this second variation, this rear image is now painted on. This is no longer a sticker. And it could be that this is when the transition took place from Zymex or Intex to uh, Zal Enterprises. Now on the wing here we notice the addition of the China marking on the, uh, on the left wing. And on the right wing, it's still A217 F14 Tomcat. But other than that, nothing else has really changed. Still the same casting. Now when we go to this next variation, of course, it still has all the same markings. But the reason why I kept it was to show the difference in paint color. Notice on the right here the the navy gray has more of a tan or brownish color to it whereas the one on the left is um, more of a gray color, more of a true gray color. Now we go to this fourth variation, which is depicting a VF-84 Jolly Rogers. Still says China, A217, F-14 Tomcat. Everything's the same.
Now to this fifth variation, we notice a little bit more detail in the paint job. And uh, it's still a VF84 Jolly Rogers, just from a different era. Same markings. Same Phoenix missiles, same landing gear, same windshield, everything's the same. But I do like the addition, this detail in the paint job right here. And um, the coloring of the wings and the detail in the rear wing. They did a really good job. Now on this one, they bothered to give it a plane number, 207, but they didn't put it on the nose, they put it on the wings, which... You would never see the number of the aircraft here on the wing. All right. Now this next one seems to be going back to the Top Hatters paint job, but they've got the addition of U.S. Enterprise printed on the on the body of the cra aircraft there and instead of having a squadron marking on the rear it just generically says F-14 this is so strange so again they they went to some length to be specific to a aircraft carrier but then they didn't I don't know so still says China A-217 F-14 Tomcat Still a very beautiful casting. And on this last one, which is depicting VF-124 gunfighters, and they put a nose number on there, and they put even more detail. A lot of the caution and, and warning indicators that would be on the aircraft and the US markings are now painted on they're not stickers anymore but seeing the VF124 marking down here on the on the bottom on the belly of the aircraft is where you would see it so this one, they they actually really did well. I'm I'm impressed. I played with this one a lot when I first bought it about 20 years ago. But super cool. So if we look at the ones that are in packaging, this is the earliest variation I have in the packaging and uh, it is still a Zymax although this was after eight, uh, 1993 when Zal Enterprises had finally taken over and we see here that it is still a sticker so I can only assume the uh, when it was in text that the uh, image on the rear wing here was was a sticker as well so when we go to the motor max variation here's uh, one of the hot wings and this is the uh, vf84 uh, comes with the the this landing gear this foam landing gear piece this is how they they come today from Motor Max. And here is another Motor Max example that was distributed by Redbox. So this is a different packaging style from the carded toy. The earliest Zymex card or Intex card is going to be this one right here. Now I don't have this one with a Tomcat packaged in it, but um, 1983 is when the Super Dynaflights line started, 
but 1983 is not when the Tomcat came out. The Tomcat was first advertised in the 1988 catalog, but it wasn't even shown as the casting that exists today. It's just a generic model. And in 1989, we then see the Tomcat as it's, uh, as it's known today with the first Top Hatters squadron markings. And I'll also note that in 1989 was the first year for the Wild Wings, which were horribly unpopular. And by uh, 1993, when Zal Enterprises had taken over, uh, the Wild Wings had been stripped from the toy line. Thanks for watching, people. Make it a great day. Breakfast! I'm hungry! Take it from Carinkles, that's me. The best breakfast under the big top is post-sugar rice Carinkles. So crinkly, so delicious, so different. Each grain of rice in sugar rice crinkles is crinkled with honey and sugar. It's so good, I crinkle every time I eat it. Yet, no matter what other rice cereal you've ever tried, you'll love post-sugar rice crinkles best of all. Honey and sugar make it different and wonderful. A circus of fun to eat. So you crinkle on down to the store for post-sugar rice crinkles, the greatest cereal treat on earth.